operating on a frequency of 52 megacycles by authority of the Federal Communications Commission. A test program follows. Hello and good evening and welcome to uh, this week's Coach Show with me, Chris, and Brett, who's also all for one gaming. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, happy New Year! I suppose let's start with the obvious ones. Yeah, uh, happy New Year! You all better be here for more than just Kote, yes. Uh, first of all, <laughs> I'm going to say hi to Karen in the chat. Great to see you. Haven't seen you here for a while, so you see hi to Jupiter as well. And Jupiter, this kicks off now. <laughs> so, Brett, how you been, man? How are my decks? Are you still babysitting my decks and have not opened them? I, I have not opened your decks. They're currently underneath my Worlds Collide starter set tokens and my uh, fingers. And your fingers? Yes. Right. I, I feel it, 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 safe it, it, there. It, it, it's a joke for my, uh, for my wife's Netherlands wife. Okay. It's a long story. I'm not, I'm not getting into it today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want you to. I mean, I know we're for mature audiences. But yeah, but um, we've got a lot to get through today. Um, today we're going to go through release the Kote format, which I'm sure all 13 of you watching want to see. Uh, we're going to go through the current uh, top cut status for Kote 7, uh, so everyone knows which cut they're going to be into and how that's going to work over the next four weeks. Uh, we're going to talk about the giveaway and we've got uh, a couple of events to go through. So let's get started. So first of all, on, on my list of show notes, you got a friend of you is FFG this evening, three hours and five minutes ago, released this card to Facebook. Ooh, Hard Simpson. Uh, elusive. Uh, after Hard Simpson is dealt damage, steal one. If you if the tide is low, your opponent steals one instead. Evil twin, reap. If the tide is high, deal, deal uh, uh, a damaged creature captures one from its own side. I prefer the, the Evil Twin version of it. I, I, I like both because they, they've got a nice sense of working together neatly. But at the same time, yeah, the Evil Twin is definitely twin. I'd say definitely a better one. It doesn't have a lucid, but that's in the grand scheme, grand same, yeah, general thing of general scheme of things. That's that's not too bad. But uh, apparently, the music's a little bit too loud. Okay, turn it down. Yeah, that, that is a bit too hard. <coughs> uh, we're go. fixing it now, not tonight. Thanks for that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I just like the fact we've got new cards, to be honest. I, I'm easily pleased. Uh, maybe a little bit lower. I, need, I feel like I need a natural mixing desk. Right, there we go. How's that not tonight? There we go. Uh, Karen's saying that the normal one is better. You, you can damage it yourself during high tides and immediately steal. Mm. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, so Keyforge Alchemist, a what, uh, a guy on Twitter basically was hounding the devs, and they have released Hard Simpson, and this is it's just a one card release. Hopefully, we'll get some more with the next Crucible cast. Two cards. <clears throat> Two cards. Hmm? It's, it's one card, but it's an evil twin. But there's two of them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yes, the, Dave, the, 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 the downside is absolutely is awful, bad. and the fact that Hard Simpsons Evil Twin mode isn't a may, it's a must, so if you've only got them down, if you've only got that down in a damaged creature, you're in trouble. It's... It's an, it's an okay card. I'd, I'd be happy to see it in sealed... It, it might not be something I wouldn't want to build it. I wouldn't want to pick a deck that was built around it. I mean, I think we've got to see more cards of what else is coming. It's too early to really say, but exactly. I, 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 as always, yep. I'll, I'll agree with you completely in what you're saying here because that's easier. Because I'm generally wrong when I come up with anything else. It's also um, we also have to see how easy it is to manipulate the tide because we know we can 
we can do the tide on the actual card. But is there other ways to manipulate the tide as well? Yes, it's a, it looks like going to be a common, Dave. Yep. Oh, Dave, I'm going to be looking for a five hard Simpson deck, and then I'm going to make you buy it from me. <laughs> I want 12 for making buy it from us. <laughs> About $5, right? <laughs> I'm your uh, yeah, all no worries, Keith. Keith, I've been teaching all day. No worries, uh, man. <laughs> Tell, at least you, you still have schools in. Oh, the hard schools are yeah. currently uh, back to homeschooling, so I'm having a fun time here. With my but no, kids. it's just good to get some Dark Tidings spoilers because we're, what, just six weeks away from Dark Tidings if we're lucky? Yeah, completely. So, let's... So, I reckon we're going to be eight weeks away, but let's see when it comes. At least, as is we being the UK, I reckon I'll hit the UK come March, mid-March. But let's wait and see. Let's hope yeah. not, to be clear. <laughs> but let's wait and see. It's good if you can consistently do two free damage. It is. And it's a card you don't really want to fight, but it's a four power. It depends on the rest of the set. I think it's a card that needs support from the rest of the set. So, um, I'm going to move on to the next news item. So, first of all, I've updated it just to say playoffs in the top for whoever pointed it out. Good catch, sir. Good catch. It's a cut. The US data there because the people kept complaining on, on, on the Discord. <laughs> um, we had some drama, as we always do mid tournament um, at the weekend. Now, I'm not going to go into the details. If you really care about the drama, go back and read it. I just want to say one thing and then say we, as an admin team, we made a mistake. Uh, we made a mistake, which is we should not have deleted some posts that were put on there. Uh, it wasn't discussed as a team. It was an action that happened. We put our hands up as a team and say, this shouldn't have happened. This won't happen going forward. If you, if there should never be circumstances where posts are being deleted, unless you're deleting them yourself. Um, if it does happen, let me know. Uh, and I will go and find out who did it and slap them. Uh, but I want to put our hands up saying what we did there was wrong. Uh, it's, a, it's a team responsibility here, here to make sure it doesn't happen. Um, I'm not going to go with all the rest of the drama because if you really care, go and read it. Um, I don't. We're moving on. Life continues. Uh, okay. Thank you for those to the community members who jumped to our support. Thank you for those who weighed in their balanced opinions. Um, and I, it's really nice to see the community come around with us here. Uh, but I don't want to go into the guts. Of, I just yeah, the, the entire up. issue was a tough topic. And the moment it happened, we did have a discussion about it. And we did what we felt was best for the community regarding that issue. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Without going into the issue. <laughs> That, that's uh, uh, Jupiter. I rotated my setup. Oh, November. <laughs> when I need, Ju on a new desk, but yeah. I uh, think Jupiter yeah. just came, joined the giveaway last week, then left. Didn't really stick around to look. <laughs> that's great. I mean, yeah, I, I, I got some. I replaced my broken desk for six meters of desk or kitchen worktop, as some people call it. Best decision, best hundred quid I ever spent. But cheers, man. Right, so we're going to move on to the next thing, which is the happy stuff, the giveaway. Yeah. So, um, Brett, go for it. So, we have custom Dragon Shield Saurian ke uh, Keyforge sleeves. Beautiful art done by Josie, a.k.a. Keyforge Ecuador, who's currently in the chat. These are being given away completely free. You get two entries if you're a YouTube subscriber, one entry if you're a T uh, Twitch follower, you get five for being a Twitch sub, is it, Chris? I think so. Just a second, I'll pull it up in front of me. And then Just you get, uh, if you're a Patreon follower, you get more based on your tiers. The maximum yeah. any one person can have is 17 entries. And then you, and for that, you have to be a top tier Patreon subscriber. There's, there's no requirement for you to be paying. It's just that's just like an incentive side of it. You can just go for the free entries of being a YouTube subscriber and a Twitch follower. We're not trying to pressure anyone to support us financially. It's just a simple case of we thought those that want to should get a little bit of an extra reward. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so I've just shared the screen with the form in itself. Here you can see if you're just a, a, the bottom tier patron, it's two free entries red, five, seven, blue, yellow, 20. And if I remember. Red is five uh, British pounds a month. Blue is uh, ten yeah. British pounds a month. The Yellow base is one is two British pounds, pounds a, month. a month. Red is five pounds a month. Uh, blue is ten pounds a month, and it comes with an exclusive sticker. And yellow is twenty-five pounds a month, and it comes with an exclusive mug after three months. 
That's what you told me? Yes. That's what, <laughs> pa that's what Patreon told me they'll do. So, yeah. So, if you're interested and want to help out, please go in here. If you don't want, if you can't afford to, please don't do it. The point here is any money we get from here will go towards um, future price support and future kit to get us getting looking more professional as we go. Um, exactly. We haven't actually cashed any money out of any of the assistance we have so far. We've made like 20 quid so far in three months. If we work out how to take it out in the future, that'd be great. Yeah, so we should, be able, we should be able to cash out in a few months. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to move on to the next news items. Is I've done a couple yes. of changes on the code directory. So uh, for those who are eagle-eyed here, you will see there is a cut listed on here uh, of one of the cuts of cut two. One of the pairings is Team Labwork versus SES Sharks. So I'm just putting that out here because I'm now going to point out is we are included in your matches now. You'll see if you go to your team page, all your matches you have coming forward as well. We say which cut deck that each person is playing with. And this number corresponds to this number down here. So the captain of Team Labwork, of course, I've, I've chosen a team whose name I can easily pronounce, uh, <laughs> is playing uh, Project Kai, the Poisoner's Ivy Tower. No, he's not. He's playing the new Cat Burglar, Smilegate. Uh, the blue player is playing Warwick 20 or Zetri. And the red player, uh, Chong Meng Yi Jason, is playing I Have No Idea. Um, so the middle entry, the middle deck. Um, that's in here. And also, this isn't published live yet, but it will be in a few minutes. We do have all the cuts listed here. So we'll be showing you, walking you through this website. And this website will be made probably five minutes after the stream ends today. Uh, finally, we have Code 8 registration here, which we'll come on to in a few minutes. And we have the giveaway up here. And because people are unable to go over to uh, record and result, we put the record result button here and also here. And we highlight which week it is so you know which to put on the form. Um, if you can think of any other ways to make it more obvious, please let me know. But we're down to only two teams who failed to do it this week. This Flashing week. lights around the button. I don't like flashing lights. <laughs> if we if we get enough subscribers and patrons, we will fly Chris out to people's houses to staple it to their foreheads. Uh, I, I, after COVID, here. after COVID, <laughs> COVID's the issue there more than anything else. <laughs> Once COVID started, that's when the stapling starts. So uh, we're going to move now on to the next topic we have. I hope I've got this in the right order. Yep, we have. So Brett, do you want to talk about the KPL event coming up this week? Yes, so KPL, the Keyforge Premier League, have got a short Archon Adaptive event coming up. So, short Archon Adaptive is basically a one round adaptive. You both uh, put in decks, you base, you bid chains for the deck. If both players select the same deck they want to use, you bid chains and then you play it out. It's a really fun format, and some people I've seen in the Keyforge Premier League Discord. I've been discussing that is possibly one of the best formats because it's one that's instantly comes with the uh, equalizing effect of the change. You can both bring similar decks, and you uh, you can bring similar decks. So you can bring an overpowered deck and a deck that's hard to play, and you can give your opponent the deck that's hard to play and take the better deck. And as Jupiter just pointed out, the top four spot uh, spots in this tournament will also get entry into the season two of the KFPL League. So you get your chance to play with the best of the best of the community. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and that's awesome. And uh, what time does that kick off? In which time zone? That e is starting four. That is January 9th, so Saturday. It's starting 11 a.m. EST, uh, 4 p.m. GMT. It's a $10 entry, but 25% of the entry pool will go to first place. Cool. Yeah. And the last few events they ran had over 100 competitors, so. We look forward to seeing uh, those numbers. Saying eight. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's divided through the top eight. So, twenty-five percent goes to first place. Fifteen percent goes to second place. Third and fourth place take ten percent, and fifth through eighth take five percent. The remaining twenty percent then goes to the KFPL League Two as part of the prize money. Yeah, and uh, Big Big Z has said if they hit 128 participants, he'll extend that to the top 16. It's all on the link that I posted in there. It's last time they had 108 participants for the charity one. Wow! Uh, which raised over a thousand dollars for charity. Uh, hopefully, they'll be able to break the 128 limit that they've been looking at this time. 
Yep, you're definitely getting close. Cool, that's great to hear, Jupiter. Good luck with that. Uh, second, we've got Morty Mortimus' weekly Tesla event. Do you want to go with this, Brett? Because you know the details here more than me, I'm afraid. Yeah, so Mortimus is going to start putting together a little result video. He wants to start from next week because new year, new baby, uh, everything going on at home. But the Tesla event you can find on the Mortimus. You can go to Marvis's channel. He streams weekly himself. <clears throat> and on Mondays, around 7.30 p.m. GMT, about 2, 3 o'clock EST, you can join the Tesla event where basically a random flip is done between 1 and 2 each round. And that is a toss-up between Archon and Reversal. So you need to bring a deck that is high skill, high maneuverability that you know very well that someone would not be able to play that well. It's a brilliant example of like well, the KFPL's tournament. You need a deck that you can play well that's hard to learn because yeah. you don't know what format you're going to be walking into. You don't know what deck you're going to be playing. No. This sounds like it completely. Ooh. And uh, yeah, good luck to Mortis. We look forward to getting your video next week going through the results. Yeah. The, the final event we're going to go through today is one we repeated from last week. Um, yeah. The Solar team... Um, have created the Champion of the Crucible, which essentially is a King of the Hill event. I'm going to quickly play uh, a cut down version of the video, and then we will go through the current results of that when we get to the results section of yeah. this week's show. Welcome to the Society of Logic and Reason's weekly segment, Champion of the Crucible. Here's a brief summary on how it works. Players select a deck and attempt to climb through the ranks to become the Champion of the Crucible. But players must choose wisely. If they lose a match, their deck will be banned from the league and they will be forced to start back at square one, both in rank and deck. If you'd like to join the Champion of the Crucible League, head over to the Solar Community on their Discord server. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. So, hopefully that's given a good, another good introduction to what the event is. Um, what we didn't say at the start of this week's show is... We are going to have a set at the end of our show here talking about results. This is going to go through the results of Coat, as we always have done. We're also going to go through results of other tournaments. So we have an event run by Karen and the Swindle team. We're going to go through the result current leader of the Champion of the Crucible. Now we have a very detailed script that Brett will have to read out verbatim. It's uh, not and this is also too where we're going to have <laughs> Mortius, uh, Mortius's, uh My results. personal MVP for the Solar event this week has been I mean, it's got to be Jupiter of the uh, Keyforge Premier League because every day he was on that server for the last week fighting his way to try and get that crown. Wow. Whether he did or not, you're going to have to wait until the results. That's true. I haven't <laughs> actually looked at the results yet. I know I've got them in another window, but I haven't looked at them yet. <laughs> Cheers, Karen. Have a great evening. Thanks for coming. So we're going to move on now to probably the thing that all 21 of you care about, which is co-tape format yes so let's let's play this the video for this week <laughs> We are operating on a frequency of 52 megacycles by authority of the Federal Communications Commission. A test program follows. To you who have been trained technically, I need hardly say that there is still a number of problems to solve. Justify the statement at least that these technical problems are not insurmountable.
<laughs> Hello. So guys, We're that's back. the uh, Kotate format finally announced. Um, it's a uh, SAS ladder where we're going to be increasing this completely Brex format. I'm just going to say a lot about it because I really like the format I did. It's, it, it's not my format. We were, Basically, if some people remember, we went back to the community, we went on Discord, we went on Facebook, and we asked you what you wanted in an event. <clears throat> there was a lot of talk about chains, a lot of talk about things like uh, going along those lines. But the general consist consistent was that people wanted an event that was fun, that showcase decks that they didn't quite play a lot and some people wanted an event where they weren't stuck with the same deck some people were saying that they were, they were if there's been events where they picked a deck immediately didn't get on with it and wish they'd pick a different deck so going from that <clears throat> we went to the admins we kept we workshop some ideas and lots of ideas lots of ideas and the sas climb up and down was the one that came through originally it was just going to be a straight climb up but because we're moving to round robin we're going to start moving down because and this is something that's going to be really good as well the more teams we get in here the higher that peak sas gets in a round robin with eight teams we're going to get to about 74 sas at the cutoff point <clears throat> And why not? So, uh, has asked a great question. I just don't want to make sure we don't miss it, which is how will we treat uh, SAS yeah. be treated with Dark Tidings? The rule we are have is every week you must submit your decks by m end of Monday. In the other words, I will start moaning at people Monday GMT evening. Um, if you have not submitted a new deck by the, by the time the, the round starts, you will use the same deck as you had the previous week. And your SAS will be recorded when you register your deck so i will i will have a script that looks at your deck on decks of key forge yeah uh, so uh i've just said it is every yeah. week you will have to submit a deck into a form where we will then lock the sas so in so, the sign up form we have today you just need to put in a deck for your each one deck for each team member exactly this is going to be a lot more work for the players but unlike coat seven where you had to register all five decks in one go this time you are able to change your decks as they go up. Uh, we do understand that SAS is updated at the beginning of each month, and your SAS is logged at the moment you put the deck in. So if you put your, if you register your deck at the end of January, and then that deck jumps up on February first to seventy SAS, it's been locked in at the point that it was put into. If that makes sense. Uh, the other so side of it question, is, Andrew. yeah, this is why we're being allowed to use Dark Tidings, because each t player is submitting a different deck each week. So you you can submit Dark Tidings, you can go... That, yeah, there will be yeah. frequent changes between SAS and... It's something we did discuss keeping out, but we think it's going to be more fun to have Dark Tidings brought immediately in. And we're quite we're quite interested to see how it's going to affect the tournament to have Dark Tidings coming straight in. Yeah, I, I mean, it's going to be interesting. I mean, the last time we did SAS based events in back in August, oh. there obviously wasn't really a new set. Mass Mutation had stabilized by then, and there was a couple of SAS changes after we started, but no team went up more than a combined of one SAS point. Now, yes, with Dark Tidings being a brand new set, the SAS here is going to be horrifically painful for them to work out because it's all new um but it's gonna but at the same time because we're locking it in as soon as you go in um the following week you'll come along and maybe you'll have to change it maybe you won't it's, it's just to see how it goes and hey like right. everything we do here if the format doesn't exactly work, and we are we have addressed the issue that some teams are bringing up of teams getting buys and that pushing them into the top cuts when <coughs> teams Us. didn't get buys so the event, is, as we've said in the last few, it, the event is now round robin, so you'll face every other team in your group. The great thing about that with Co Eight is the more teams we get brought in, the more the S the, the SAS is going to climb. If you can get, if we can get, you know, okay, my wife's just having a, a, quite an attack there. If we can say, get break eighty teams, each group is going to have ten players. That means that the the SAS is going to jump even higher. <clears throat> Uh, 
It's the Kong. It, if uh, Dark Tiny drops early, it doesn't matter. Because I'm pretty sure that the TCO doesn't put it in until the official release date. Also, the TCO will have to have to implement it, which will take some time. If your if your if your Dark Tiny SAS goes from 60 to 75, you can keep using it until because because you've locked it in at the point of registration. The, if that makes sense. It's, I've never seen a deck jump 15 sass. I'm not going to say it's never happened, but it'll be a handful of times. I trust Sky Jedi and Cryogen and the, all the guys over at TCO to have it ready and ready to go. And the guys over at Dex and Keyforge, Nathan, and the guys do a lot of work. If TCO is slow to roll out, that's why it says on the video, uh, that's why it says on the sign up form, when TCO has implemented it, that's when it can go. And, and I'll be very clear here. We will announce on stream when Dark Tiding is considered implemented. So if they've implemented half of it, we won't allow Dark Tiding decks. And but this will be an announcement we will make on stream. I can't imagine Sky Jedi and Kaijin rolling out half of the set. Uh, well, uh, Mass Mutation was half done, and then they have the other half. <laughs> but yeah, oh, it, it's just because it takes time. It's bit by bit, and it's going to take them time to get there. So I, it's perfectly possible they don't even get it in until the event finishes. Uh, Andrew, I highly suspect there's going to be a fair amount of Jenker and Quixel Stone and Heart of the Forest decks at the start of this event. But like everything, we're trying something new here, guys. We learn from it. Uh, if it doesn't work, we'll never do it again. If it does work, the twin, we'll the twin finger is going to be definitely rough to see how it goes, and I'm quite interested to see how that's going to be brought in. Uh, the other thing is because we're going to be climbing down. So after the, th we're going to be climbing up. Only up, we're going to be climbing up only till the playoff. And this is something we want to make clear: the playoff is included in the climb. Between the end of group and the playoff, you will jump up another two SAS. That'll be the peak SAS. And then in the top sixteen, we'll go down by four. In the top eight, we'll go down by another four. In the top four, we'll go down by another four. And then in the top, in the finals, it'll be 16 sass lower than the peak. So the decks are going to get harder and harder and harder to play as you got, got progress further into the event, is what we're hoping. Uh, Fighting Maloon, they will be online in the next few days. Uh, we just uh, ran out of time to get the fit right up finished. So the, fair, the, this, this video will be on YouTube in an hour and a half. It's already set to premiere. Premier. This is all also this is on the farm as you join up. And when uh, when co when we get closer to Coat 8, um, we will have a brand new rule set coming out as well. So so I'm hoping that we can take any questions that were asked and put them into an FAQ over the next few weeks. And I encourage people, so everyone who asks your really good questions here, yeah. go to the Discord channel, go to the rules channel and ask in there to make sure we don't miss it out from yeah. our FAQ. So uh, yeah, after this after this stream, I'm going to get a new channel open, Co8 Questions, and we're going to take all your questions, we're going to get the answers to them, and then at the, uh, and then we're going to answer them on the stream. We're going to do like a public forum, we're going to take all the questions that anybody has about Co8, and we're going to give you straight and clear answers that well, people can then go back to and quote, quote back at us when we make a, a wrong decision. Uh, well, let's see, there'll be answers at least, <laughs> I hope they'll be straight and clear. That, that's the win, that's the bonus. But let's move on now because, as I say, we've got a we've got a lot to cover still today. But thanks everyone for the support. Thanks everyone for the great questions. Please keep it us. We'd rather the questions are asked now, not the end of February, when you're halfway through the event. Will there be a cap for teams in group? Uh, unless, unless it goes ridiculous, like we get 160 teams, unlikely. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, we I will do my best to balance the groups out so we're across eight groups again. Uh, I'm fearing that we may have to have another begging plea for some teams to join as pacific as we did this time um, yeah the uh, that, the time but, the time limit will remain one hour yeah the time limit will remain one hour i will be honest if we get 160 teams entering <laughs> we've got bigger problems probably <laughs> uh, um, i don't think your code can handle it i don't think i can mentally handle it um but yeah there, there's no there's no cap um I, I don't want it to see it go to i don't mind seeing it go 10 weeks in the group stage I'm less keen to see it going 15 weeks, but I'll accept it. It will not go yeah. 20 weeks in the group stage. That's how I see it. No. 
Uh, and yes, the time that will be one hour. And Andrew, stop giving me nightmares because I feel that's probably <laughs> you're giving me nightmares from that one. I want, I want, I'm loving it because I want to break 100 teams. It's been my goal for the last two coats. And I think if any coat can break 100 teams, it's this one. Because I imagine everybody is going to be trying to get everybody else in so we can get this SAS climbing as high as possible. Yeah, great. I tried so... to get it to the point where we wouldn't go over 80, but I'm intrigued to see if the community can beat me and get this SAS to go over 80. Just to be clear. <clears throat> If it goes over 100, I'll go and beat you. But yeah. <laughs> right. Let's uh, let's move on to the metrics on this week's metrics from uh, Can't Touch. Uh, not Can't Touch this. Sorry, guys. Baguettes and Chips or Baguettes and Switch. Um, yes. So as regular viewers will know, and as those guys who are here for the first time, uh, Baguette and Chips every week, uh, Lip Tops from the, their captain, will goes through the data breakdown. And has we give him full access to all the results data, and he does some analysis over the decks compared to the results we see coming through. Firstly, Liptots, thank you for all the work you do here. It's awesome. I don't know how you turn around some of this so quickly, but it's also good to see a fellow coder or fellow scripter taking this information and coding this all together. So I, I feel less alone as I'm swearing at uh, the front end and the code directory. So this week, Liptots has gone through and he's done it as uh, the code, uh, looking at house by house, how. <clears throat> the difference is between the average, I believe the average of all decks on decks of Keyforge, not decks of Keyforge, in the event, sorry, versus the top deck, set decks. And let me just pull up my notes because I've managed to lose them. Oh. Here we go. Uh, first column is the average metrics of decks containing discs. Second is the column is the gap between the score and the average of total decks. So this is the average of disc decks in all of Coat 7. And this is the difference between the disc ones and the average. So we're saying the dis, decks that have discs are on average slightly higher, I'd say such a small amount we can discount it. But as we all know, this is disruption heavy. And of those oh, yeah. half percent, that is one hell of disrup disruption increase. But really that is. is at the cost of creature protection. Yeah, but with cards like Arise, Grim Reminder, Stirring the Grave, Exhume. Yeah. You're not that bothered about your creature protection because you've got creature recursion. Exactly. You, what you're looking for is that disruption. You're looking at getting your toxins, your shuffles, your ember imps, your succubuses down, succubi down, and you're looking at getting that big in trouble. <clears throat> and on the right, we see that 33% of COTA or COTA decks have this in it. 33% of mass mutation decks have this in it. Which is a surprise. Oh, I mean, we don't get so me wrong. I'm sorry, I, I'm Tesmos. sorry. Uh, Jupiter saying that I sound very cold to that. So you also want your Tesmals and your Pit Lords. E's. Pit Lord is cold. E on oh, the sorry. fringes, Infernus, uh, Malisons, Lilifuls. <laughs> it's, easy, it's easy if I skip AOA. <laughs> I should know this. I've just I've just done all the Wilds Collide ones and it, I, I finished uh, filing them all. I'm still missing a few, but yeah. So, moving on to Logos. As we all know, again, Logos is efficiency high, speed high. Uh, and the cost there is, again, this is at the cost of disruption. There's, <clears throat> and as we all know, with all the houses, we always expect to see one big sad increase at the cost of other things. So, Logos is all about speed, getting through your deck, getting your cards. This is why Logos is many people's favorite house. It's probably my second favorite after Untamed. But here we see the cost again is at disruption, or opposite to this is the disruption. Um, that we can't do much to really in, in, into space and, and uh, upset the momentum of the opponent, but we can get through our deck higher faster to get through the cards on the other houses. Anything to add? Uh, I was looking at the Amber Control, and it was like, that's not as high as I was expecting as a minus. I was expecting it to be a bit higher. But then I noticed that it's a, it's a very mass mutation and world Clyde heavy, yep. and my, my, well, mass mutation and world Clyde uh, logos is a lot more capture and key cost increasing than the, the Age of Ascension or Archons were. Cool, completely. But as, as Jupiter was saying, logos is a unifier house. It's good at bringing the uh, the deck together and getting the speed and getting your next few turns set up. Oh, completely. <clears throat> No, that's a good, that's a unifier house. That's a perfect phrase. It's not yeah. one I've heard, heard before in card games, but I'm sure I'll be told off that every card game uses it. But no, completely. Uh, and, and as we see here from the stats, as you said, it's, it's just over a third of Worlds Collide decks had Logos, just under a third 
were Logos and Mass Mutation. So you see Logos here is a very popular house ac across all the sets in your own AOA. It isn't terrible at anything. And I wonder I wonder well, how many of these uh, 25 Age of Ascension decks uh, were Brig. Well, you, you should be able to find that out at the end in our quiz. <laughs> Dave's got a question about the stats. Go for it, Is the difference including or excluding the house that's compared to? Great question. We will go back and actually, we know Liptops will be watching this tomorrow. Liptops, yeah. if you could please answer in the Coke Discord to answer that question, that's a very valid point. I believe it is include the average is including. In fact, we can tell that very quickly just by. No, I think the average is not including. But let's uh, let's get Liptops to confirm that tomorrow. It's a great question. Yeah, I think it's just basically the average. Or... Uh, no, I think it's the average house because the numbers change. So it's like yeah, the average, average logo house. house. Yeah. It's the average of the logo's house versus the average of what was brought in the event. Uh, no, I thought it was. Sorry, let's go back here. The first column is the average met dupes of decks contained. The second column is. Yeah, no, you're right. Brett is right. This is the left one is average of logos across all the decks of Keyforge. The right one is the, the average of logos across all of Coach. Rereading my notes. Dang it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So this is Shadows. Now, this is the things that surprised me. Was Shadows actually goes down in SAS? Okay, it's such a small amount. Again, it's irrelevant. Um, but apart from that, if the Shadows, yes, they're not very efficient at all, but they are there to cause trouble. But the cost of efficiency, the effective power, the creature protection is so great. I mean, yeah, you see the artifact yeah, control you... higher, but... I you're mean, not I... really seeing a, a good point of diminishing return because your efficiency, your effective power, your creature power, everything is a lot lower than the gains you're getting in the disruption, the uh, uh, expected amber, the, cre the amber control. It's, it, this is really interesting to see, but it's also a case of... This also shows that on average, Shadows has changed a lot between the sets. Yes, I mean, if you look at the allocation, 42% of Kota have Shadows, which doesn't surprise me. World's Glide is less than 20%, or just over 15%, really. Again, doesn't surprise me. Mass Mutation is about a third. Yeah, I, I can see that. AOA is a special case, there's not enough decks there, there really to go through. But, yeah. The, the one the, thing I, that I has that. caught my eye, though, is this is the first house that's got a positive number in the anti-synergy is zero positive and compared to uh, this is um this is and logos is minus 9.1 i'd say this yeah <laughs> that's not so, that the philosophical discussion is zero yeah. positive or negative but yes so although everything else is kind of six or one half dozen of the other your decks anti the, the the cards that are being brought in shadows are working well together they're gelling together the definitely definitely so moving on to untamed my personal favorite house i expected amber control well i suppose no that is where i expected amber control be increased protection i expected the... it to be a lot lower <laughs> like my a good couple of minus number digits but the thing I love about Untamed, this is why I love them as a house, is other. <laughs> it's all about the shit you're not expecting. <laughs> I'm pretty or, sure over. I'm pretty sure over is referring to Heart of the Forest, Shelter, <laughs> uh, Key Frog, Key Charge. Yeah, there's a lot of them, and as we were saying, we're going from a 2.6, but we've gone. I mean, we've only gone from 2.6 to realistically. Full, uh, but that's still yeah. a hell of a proportional increase. Why, why not bring it in the mimicry? I love mimicry so much. It's even better just when you have it for disc. I, I I love mimicry just because it gets around the the rule of six. Mm. It, it, I, I I want to play mimicry seven times in a game, just for the sake of it. In a turn or a game? In, in a turn, sorry. I want to play mimicry seven times in one turn, just to watch my opponent go. You can't do that, and me explain to them in great detail why I can. <laughs> and we'll record that for everyone to have to uh, watch the guy's response as he beats you afterwards. Five, yes. five, two, three, seven minimum. But, uh, um, 
but I should say, Untamed has seen heavily in Mass Mutation and Dakota, which is kind of where I'd expect to see. I possibly would have said a little bit more on Worlds Collide, but 18% kind of makes sense. You, you can understand the ammo control being low because they don't really have much capture, but Mass yeah. Mutation does kind of even that out a little bit with the capture icons. Yeah, Creature definitely. protection, they don't really have taunters, they have poison and things like that. But... <clears throat> So, Saurian. Now, now, obviously, Saurian in Worlds Collide, so Call of Archons and Age of Ascension is terrible because it doesn't exist. Or amazing, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. But to see that 65% of Worlds Collide decks had Saurian isn't a surprise in the slightest to me. I mean, uh, Saurian is, is kind of where it's at with Worlds Collide generally. Not people say, people argue with me a bit about this, but this is what I, I generally find. But the Saz is increased as expected. They say the average Saz is fairly high. Yeah, it's it's happened fairly high for Saurian, and it's increased. Looking at the average of coats, so that means that pretty much a lot of the decks that have been brought above eighty SA eighty SAS for Saurian. Yeah, one second. But I'm just looking at it, and yeah, Saurian don't do much disruption, so that minus forty five percent makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But the synergy, amber control, and creature protection is insane. Seventy six percent creature protection. So not only are they are they keeping your amber, manipulating your amber, they're also protecting the creature that have the amber. <clears throat> uh, what you guys are talking about with mimicry and stuff, I have done all that. It's just a case of I haven't done it to, uh, at the point where I could do it seven times. Let's see. I'm, I want to see it happen. I think I might have done it in the past before library access got nerfed. Hmm. That would make sense. So moving on to Star Alliance, the, the other amazing house for Koto and AOA. Um, again, this is the highest SAS. Now, let's be clear, it's only slightly higher than Saurian. Um, but we're looking at this, and as we go through, the expected amber is fairly low, the artifact control is non-existent. Um, but as we know, the efficiency is high. So again, if uh, this is apparently saying this is more efficient than Logos. Um, but also, from what he's saying, is the stats here come very much from the extremes. Are you still there, bro? I mean, yep. yeah, I'm still here. I'm just thinking the efficiency of Logos is in its draw power, whereas the efficiency in Star Alliance is its house cheating capability. Mm hmm. You've got a lot of cards that let you protect your creatures. You've got Kirby, you've got Val, Val Jericho that let you play creature cards, creatures, and other things outside of. You've got draw, you've got draw power in there. It where Star Alliance is more okay. Here's your turn, and I've set you up for the next few turns. Star Alliance and Saurian. If you get a good board of Star Alliance and Saurian, even if you've got a, a, a if you've got seven cards of a house in your hand, if you've got five cards of Star Alliance down, you're probably better going for the five cards of Star, Star Alliance on the board than the seven cards of a house in your hand. Yeah. I think I would challenge that one, but I'm sure you'll prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, moving on to Sanctum. Yay, Goes Sanctum. well the houses. Heavy on creature con power and amber control, but terrible on efficiency and artifact control. I mean, again, this is, this is kind of where I feel I would expect it. I mean, the anti-synergy is a lot higher. Well, stop at eight or so. Creature protection is what's getting me. They have taunters. They've got artifact. They've got upgrades that give pe creatures taunt. They've got artifacts that give creatures taunt. They have creatures that give cre uh, that heal. They've got uh, they've got actions that heal. They've got a lot of cards that can heal creatures, protect creatures, ward creatures. But they at minus zero point four. It's because people aren't bringing. Sanctum for the protection. Yeah, for the protective power. They're bringing it. I can't really see what they're bringing it in for, really, because the anti synergy is ridiculously high. I think it's mainly being brought in for, because it's mainly in mass mutation and call the archons, it's being brought in for its uh, amber control pa uh, abilities. Because a good one of the things about call the archons is doorstep to heaven. Yep. It isn't just a steal or transfer of amber, it's a delete amber, which is ridiculously powerful if you're playing against an opponent that has got graft, if they've got uh, too much to protect. 
you don't want that amber. You just want to see it disappear. Yeah, completely. And also, you see that 42% of the coated decks it existed in, and 42% of the mass mutation. And I found this very interesting. For a house that I remember in the time of AOA, Sanctum, everyone was bashing Sanctum continually. But it's still. So it's a heavy hey, presence in coated San mass Sanctum are quite, strong, are quite good at AOA, but it doesn't make up for how weak they really were in Coliacons. And as Why Not is saying, uh, Doorstep is really powerful. One, and uh, Andrew Kong is saying Angry Mobs. Angry Mobs are an amazingly efficient card. I've got what well, I've got a deck that's got two Fandangles and four Angry Mobs, and I can go for my deck so quickly. I think I've got one, but I don't have played. I must give it a try. Oh, if you, if you, if you can get an Angry Mob train going where you can just keep bringing them in ready, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'll give it a try. <laughs> and finally, Mars, the house everybody loves to hate. Um, but yet still exists in over half the core of the Arkham decks. Unsurprisingly, half of the Age of the Ascension <laughs> decks, near enough. Low size, uh, low I, I imagine a lot of those Age of Ascension decks have some form of Martian general, generosity bullshittiness. Okay. Either with Jenka or with uh, Shatterstorm or with Hypnotic Command. Uh, all these other cards where you can just go, ha ha ha, your amber is mine. But as you say, look at the stats here. Minus 47% creature protection. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, minus 45 anti-synergy. I mean, disruption minus 10. I don't I don't see a Mars ever being quite as bad as these stats make out. But then you stop and think about it. You go, actually, maybe. But you've got to remember... Uh... Yeah, Mars is the most fun house, but Mars, apart from like one card Mega Mouth, was a very self in, in contained house. It didn't yep. play well with other houses. That is true. So that is very you true. You can argue a lot of the stuff that's on here the anti synergy, the, the disruption, the efficiency is low because Mars was not really an interactable house. It was that Mars would set up for a big Mars turn and Mars would do Mars. <laughs> Uh, and as Liptox rightly puts there, this house relies heavily on its combos. Yeah. But these combos uh, are game-winning combos. Mr. Kong asks if, we should, if we'd like a new house or Mars back. Always a new house. No, I'd, I'd like to see Mars come back. I'd like to see Mars come back in the face of giant creatures and Ward and all, all these effects that they've not really seen before. And the fact that we've seen in the Niffle Kong art that Martian ships taking it on. I, I always like new I, stuff. I would, I would yeah. love to see Mars come back in a sort of mixture of star, like a Starlight Sanctum sort of way. Where they're, coming, where they're coming back with unity in mind, but with deep hatred uh, prejudice underneath. So it's sort of like a backhandery uni unity. So it's an overpowered unity, but it has a big drawback as well. Yeah. Be interesting what comes out. Finally, Brugner. The house I always forget because we don't have it as one of our groups. <laughs> Worst we don't have it as one houses. of our groups as a meme. But we, uh, with Dark Tidings, we might want to rename one of our other ones and bring in Unfathomable. I don't know. I can't spell Unfathomable. The same reason we don't have a Brugner house because I couldn't spell Brugner when I was writing you can't, to make you, houses. You can't spell Unfathomable. Inconceivable. Mate, I couldn't spell lose, uh, uh, Loser at one point. Do you not remember? <laughs> um... So yeah, inconceivable actually, I can spell, but let's not do that now. Um, worst of all, has houses, low synergy, bad efficiency and creature protection, but otherwise fairly balanced. If, would you call that balanced? I suppose, yeah. Oh, overall, well, you got to imagine Brobnar and Kota was, re was really powerful. They had border control, they had good amber control with unguarded camp, burn the stockpile, Bumpsy with war drummer, Crump. You had a lot of ways to control your opponent's board and then control your opponent's capabilities. And you could get ridiculous amounts of amber growth. As Jupiter says, War Drummer was a god. War Drummer was amazing. You had ways to increase key cost before it was popular with Iron Obelisk. Mm -hmm. And I think in Coat 8, we're going to see a lot of Brobnar decks being brought because, although, as we saw with AOA, although the not good at a high level now at the mid range they're probably still really good yeah 
No, I, I can believe that. But let's let's go and see because I think this is one of the reasons we're looking forward to the Cote format is seeing how this is all changing. I expect the rise of AOA for Cote, at least through the sixties. Let's let's go and see. Right, man, are you ready with your quiz? Uh, send, sending the rules to the players. So, yep, it's up and it's cut. Yeah, it's I, ha I can't see the screen while I'm presenting because I ran out of monitors. <laughs> ah, I can. It's it's up. Uh, we, we should still have Not Tonight in here. We should still have Mr. Kong. We should still Ooh. have everything ready to go. So, we've got six questions today. You will have 20 seconds to answer each one. Let's go. First so, question. How... Go on, go quickly. How many how Gen Con <laughs> and Martian General, uh, how many Jenkin decks are there? Martian Generosity and Key Abduction. Four, eight, or twelve? Uh, uh, I also put in a ten because they need four answers. That's why I was okay. going to do it. <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, you just tell me where to press next. Yeah, yeah it's fine. I I, uh, we need to tell the tops we need at least four answers for the uh, extension. Sure. I do love this little extension. I'm glad it's back. Last couple of players coming in to get those zero point answers. Very nice. So the correct answer was eight. Three people got that correct. Two people went 12. Two people went four. One person went 10. Oh, not tonight. Getting that one wrong. Oh, that's <clears> a big <throat> shot. Ready for the next one? I have this one. How many decks were brought that had last year broken dreams and too much to protect? Uh, three, six, 11, or nine? I didn't think that was a combo. I thought it's... it was a synergy. I don't think it's a combo, but it's definitely synergy. Key Hammer and, two... and Lash of Broken Dreams is a combo. <coughs> uh, JPC Luma coming in with nine. Just waiting for the final three players to get in. Why not coming in with nine? If you want to take part, you just need to actually click on the screen. Uh, yeah, tax again. That's why I see it as a synergy because you're raising the amber before, uh, then too much protecting. But I see a combo of something that's done all in one go. It kind of yep. makes sense for having a synergy. Uh, three people went one, two people went six, two people went eleven, and three people got the correct answer with nine. Well done, guys. So who's currently uh, on the leaderboard? I'm not going to say. I Are put ho oh, instead of how. How many Sinesis, Rex, and Golden Spiral decks are there? 5, 3, 7, or 18? It's <laughs> a hint. There's not 18. You, 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 could be. There well, could well be. I got, with what I'm showing on the screen, it's fairly clear it's not 18. If you show it on the screen, then you're showing the right answer. I'm not showing the answer yet. I'm just showing oh. the question. I, the, that question's blocked by the actual quiz anyway. <laughs> uh, the correct answer was three. Four people guessed five. Dave got the correct answer with three. Uh, people went seven, and zero people went eighteen. That makes me sad. Well done, people. You listened. <laughs> so we're halfway through it. Let's have a look at the scores. Can't touch this Keyforge team at the top. Not tonight. One coming in at second. Uh, contestant 15, contestant 10, contestant 2, and down at the bottom, down at 9th is Keyforge Premier League at minus 16,000. But it's still, we're only halfway through. That's the question score, and the total score is pretty much the same. So, uh, on. how many Ampha Captura and Scrivener Favian decks were there? Two, three, zero, or six. This one actually surprised me. Yeah. This one, I, this, this one actually surprised me. I even messaged Liptops going, that can't be right. Surely there should be a, a bit more than that. It's this such a Dave good tells us he, This is where Dave tells us he bought six <coughs> or something like that. <laughs> no, I've, I've looked at Dave's decks. I know he hasn't got it. Uh, JP, JPC Lima coming in with a zero. Why not coming in with zero? <sighs> It is actually the correct answer. It is zero. Three people went with three. Three people went zero. Two people went six. And one person went with one. Uh, what was two? Okay. Give us clues earlier. <laughs> That's not how this works. 
But yeah, I was really surprised that it was zero. I, I love the combination. I, I brought it to the KPL one. Uh, how many Brig decks were there? Binate Rupture and Interdimensional Graft. Was it four, twelve, eight, or zero? It's not twelve. Could be twelve. Well, it's not on my list of answers. I've got it. Just your list might not be up to date. You gave me you that. So hopefully your, your original list didn't even have questions on it. <laughs> That's true. The, the original <laughs> list did not exist. <laughs> So uh, Liptops and his team added these questions today when we complained the stats they gave us didn't have any questions because they were uh, worried the slides would be too long. Fezro, one, two, three, coming in with eight. Yeah, JCP Lima coming in with four. The correct answer is eight. Four people went four, four people went eight, and one person went 12. So that, even though, I, who's the person that's specifically going for the wrong answer? I am kind of impressed by this. <laughs> it's not me this time. <laughs> How many Finally. tributes and six Semper Tyrannosaurus are exile decks with this? So, deck, exile or six Semper with tributes. 13, 7, 10, or 17? I know that one. How do you know that one not tonight? <coughs> Has she been through all the decks recently then? <laughs> Possibly. Or 350 odd. I haven't guessed this well this time. Uh, Jupiter, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. That's the, that's the way it works. Dave coming with the 13. Y you win by taking... Oh! oh. Not tonight knows the person. <laughs> you didn't study up. 13 pe five people went for 13. Uh, four people went for 10. Nobody went for 17. Whoever was intentionally going for the wrong answer, you've let me down now. So, final results are Can't Touch This Keyforge team take the win with almost quadrupled the score. I suspect a little bit of cheating going on there. <laughs> no, oh, just a hell of a good. Uh, no, uh, no, they didn't write it, but no, they may uh, get told off for not taking part in it again. <laughs> the, uh, the Baguette and Switch team would do this, the French lads. Uh, our Polish friends did even said. Oh yeah, they they de they can deconstruct decks, so they've already checked all the decks. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kong forgot that we were doing it through the systems. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's a good excuse, man. That's a good excuse. We'll let you have it this week. We won't let you have it next week. They were, how many decks do we have here? Like three hundred and odd. Yeah, they, this is why they scripted it and didn't just do it all by hand. And can't touch this. Have gone through every single one by hand. Jesus. Even I've not gone through all 300 decks. <coughs> quick query. Go. Right, so, <laughs> quick queries, yeah. So, um, as we uh, come up now to the... Well, firstly, thanks for Baguette and, Swift, or Baguette and Chips, uh, mainly Lip Tops, for putting all this together. Very short notice. Chris, or New Year's Eve, Rue, and me complaining yesterday that we didn't have a quiz. They added it in immediately so guys thank you for turning this around your quiz you add in is the highlight for the week for many of our viewers it is for me because i always learn so much so guys it thank you uh and uh, we we hope this is going to continue as we go on unfortunately began and chips have chosen to drop out the event because they didn't make top cut and that's completely fine um but uh it we look forward to seeing you again in kote i'm pretty sure the second cut had the highest number of drops it did the second cut had twice the number of the drops that any other uh, any other cup thanks for joining us jupiter uh yeah sign up soon brilliant enjoy your meeting and yeah not like the quizzes are fun and it's subtle training to get used to the system for the next coat quiz we if want you guys to have some to yeah we want uh we want you and andrew to have some serious uh competition. serious competition yeah i like right. how people are leaving when we've got repo versus seller Fremio. Which is, yeah. uh, which is going to be some amazing games. Yep, so let's let's move on to that now. So we are going to do this week's feature games is Repout versus Silifarmo. Um, where the hell has it gone? That one. Too many...